Hello, my name is Nicholas Harrard, and today I'll be talking to you about water's role in my major, which is anthropology. Now, before I get into this actual topic, I think it's important for everyone to understand what anthropology is. So according to the American Anthropological Association, anthropology is the study of humans past and present. And for this topic, I will be talking about water's role in the development of humanity. Now, I'm sure most of you already know this, but water is essential for human life. So it shouldn't surprise you to find out that water has played a key role in the development of civilization and in our own history. From drinking water to bathing water to water used for crops, water has always had a big role in everyday human life. However, water's role has shifted throughout the years. Humans originally started off as hunter-gatherers. Back then, most of our food source would be centered around a water source, since they also relied on water. This forced early humans to live near that water source, since that is where their food was located. This also meant that humans were forced to move and relocate when that water source ran out, because their food would also leave with that water. And this cycle of moving from water source to water source, looking for food, continued on for some time. When humans learned how to grow their own food, this cycle stopped, and humans began settling down in one area. Now, the area they found best to settle down in was near a permanent body of fresh water. This is because it ensured that they had a source of water for all their daily activities, and at the same time, the soil near that body of water tended to be great for growing crops. Now, as agriculture became more common, people began to leave their hunter-gatherer lifestyles and began to settle down in bigger communities. And as communities began to grow, so did their water demands. So at this time, irrigation started becoming very common. To accommodate this increase in demand, Cities were forced to figure out how to redirect large quantities of water. And to do this, they built huge canals and dams and also large water storing structures to ensure that they had enough water in the case of a drought. Now, at this time, a lot of new inventions were made that made transporting and storing water more convenient and accessible. One of these inventions is known as kanats which was developed by Persians in 300 BC. Now, kanats are a system of subterranean tunnels that are responsible for collecting and transporting water to water barren regions several miles away. Now, this technology spread all across the world and was adapted and improved upon for hundreds of years. Now, fast forward to the 18th century and almost every major city has some form of water redirection system. Also around this time, people began to use water not only for agricultural and domestic purposes, but also as a source of energy. And with the emergence of steam power, water took on a whole new role in society. This new form of energy began what we know as the industrialization period. And as people began flocking to cities for the jobs created by industrialization, we began seeing severe water shortages and an increase in pollution of waterways. And although a lot of people tried to fix these problems, two centuries later, they're still here and are worse than ever. A lot of underground aquifers have gone dry and nearly a billion people are without access to clean drinking water. You see, water has always been our most important resource and our ability to use and relocate water has allowed us to thrive. But what will we do when we run out of water? This resource has helped build every single civilization we know, and it is in serious jeopardy. We now face our biggest problem yet, the possible loss of our most important resource. But history shows that when faced with a very serious problem, humanity has come together to find a solution. And I can only hope that history repeats itself.